If you are thinking of taking up the game of golf and want to buy a set of golf clubs, this video is for you. And what I'm gonna do here is guide you through all the categories of clubs, using my own bag here as an example. I'm going to explain what each club does, if you need it, what you should expect to be paying for each club, the brands to watch out for, and the pitfalls to avoid, because if you do it right and you kind of know what to look for, you can assemble a really excellent set of golf clubs for any budget. So bang that subscribe button to the Golf Hitter YouTube channel, it helps us a lot, and let's get cracking on this. Now this is my bag of golf clubs. The maximum amount of golf clubs you're allowed is 14, and there's 14 in here. But the first thing is, it's important to note from the outset that you don't really have to go out and buy 14 clubs for your first bag. You can get by just fine with much less. And we've made a whole other video on what golf clubs do beginners need, and we link that in the description. So check that out too. But I play a lot of golf, and kind of over time, I've settled into the habit of using a specific club for a specific shot. So I feel I need all 14 clubs in my bag, although looking at some of them in here, there's actually a couple in here that I rarely hit, actually. Now, breaking down the clubs into categories, let's first start with these ones here, the woods. Now, years ago, these were actually made out of wood, but nowadays, they're mainly made out of metal or carbon or a mixture of both. This one here, the biggest one, it's called the driver, and simply put, this one kind of hits the ball the furthest. It's the one most golfers use when they tee the ball up and hit it off a tee box. It's arguably the most fun golf club to hit. Kind of man's basic instinct is to hit things hard and enjoy the result. But it can also be one of the most difficult clubs to hit in the golf bag. Do you absolutely need one uh, of these drivers to start playing golf? Absolutely not, but club technology is so advanced nowadays that drivers are much more forgiving than years ago. So personally, I would definitely buy one with my first set. There is nothing as satisfying as a great hit with the driver. Now, this will apply to all the golf clubs that I'm gonna talk about in this video, but when you are buying your first driver, there are certain things to look out for. And the first consideration you have is whether to buy new or used. Now let's look at new first to get that fright out of the way because a new driver from a leading manufacturer can set you back in the range of 500 pounds. Yes, kind of the driver pound for pound can be the most expensive club in the bag. Now that price tag really reflect, reflects an amount of research, development, technology that the big manufacturers put into creating each new driver. There's also a large dollop of marketing in there, all of which raises the price golfers are willing to pay to hit the ball a bit further and a bit straighter. My driver, it's a Cobra, and it's actually pretty reflective of what you'll get from a leading brand. There's a mixture of carbon and metal in the head. The head is also adjustable, so I can set it up how I want. I can actually change the loft. I can adjust the weighting at the back to make the ball fly differently, really, and the shaft and the grip, and everything about the club is high quality, really. This club, hits the golf ball huge distances, even for my very average swing, and it's extremely forgiving on bad shots. Now, if you're buying a new driver as your first driver, those are the things to look out for. But, and this is a big but, I didn't buy this driver new, it's second-hand, it's pre-owned, it's used from Golf Bitter, obviously, of course, but that's because I know what the key things are to look out for in a driver. And I'll tell you the most important point now. Golf club retailing is driven by marketing and by tapping into our growing insatiable appetite as a society to ditch something and replace it with something newer that is perceived as better. Now, if you understand that point, you'll immediately be able to spot value when buying 
golf clubs. It was once actually said to us by a leading figure at TaylorMade, which is a big brand, that the evolution of drivers is very like the evolution of mobile phones. Year on year, there's hardly any difference between the models. But if you compare a 10-year-old mobile phone to a new one, then you'll really see a difference. It's exactly the same with drivers. The current model of the top drivers in many cases is essentially very, very similar to the one that was out, say, four years before. Some of the best players in the world even use drivers that are up to seven years old. Now, at the time of making this video, in our golf fitter stocks, we have two and a half thousand drivers priced at under 200 pounds. And my advice to you with your first set of clubs is to buy a used driver. Look for some of the features I described in this driver here. They are all still there in older clubs, I guarantee you. And as a beginner, depending on how well you swing the club, you might want a driver with a little more loft than mine. Essentially something that hits the ball a little bit higher. Mine is a nine degree driver, but you might choose a 10 degree one. And again, the great thing is with a driver like this, the loft is adjustable. The other important thing to look out for in a driver, new or used, is the shaft of the golf club. And the shaft is like the engine of the club. It delivers that whip of speed when hitting the ball. It kind of bends almost like a fishing rod during a cast. And most beginners, should look for a regular shaft but if you're athletic and swing the the swing the club hard you might be more suited to a stiff shaft but a lesson with the pga pro before buying that will quickly establish exactly what shaft you need the more than any other club the driver is the one that the leading manufacturers have put the most investment into. So look out for drivers from brands like uh, TaylorMade, Titleist, Callaway, Ping, Cobra, uh, and Trixon. So to summarize on drivers, if I was a beginner and buying one, I'd go into the golf bidder site and I'd first of all, Search for, say, a tailor-made driver from 2016. I look for one in great condition, adjustable, and with a regular shaft. Then I'd add my picks to a short list, and I do the same for the other big brands, and go newer, see what's newer. Once you have a number of options in your short list, then choose your favorite. Now, next up are these clubs here called Fairway Woods. They're like a smaller version of drivers, but these clubs can be used for much more, actually, than a driver. You can actually use them instead of a driver, hitting off the tee, no problem. And you can use them to hit shots off the fairway and even out of the rough. They have, actually, lots of uses. Now, Fairway Woods generally have smaller heads than the driver and they don't tend to hit the golf ball as far but they're super adaptable they're really really easy to hit compared to a driver and they're just a great club to have in the bag especially for a beginner in fact many beginners will choose not to have a driver at all in their golf bag to start off but to use a fairway wood instead until they kind of get a bit more used to the game and their swings improve to the point that they are confident in hitting the driver, really. Well, fairway woods come in different lofts. Mine here is 16 and a half degrees. It's called a three wood. And to be honest, it's one of my favorite clubs in the bag. You can get four, five, six, seven woods and even more with increasing lofts. But the three and five wood really are the most popular out there. Now, because the heads of fairway woods are smaller and less hollow than drivers, technology hasn't had ha as big an impact on these clubs compared to drivers. So this one here, it's actually from, I think, 2016 or 2017. It's a tailor-made M2, the original one. It has titanium and carbon in the head. And you know what? I still haven't come across anything newer for me, and I've seen them all to rival it. So if I was buying a fairway wood new or used, I'd use the exact same criteria as I mentioned for the driver. I would look for good materials. Titanium actually is much more popular in the best fairway woods. So don't be dissuaded at all by an all titanium headed fairway wood. Adjustability would be a nice consideration. And the shaft flex, think about that too as per the driver. 
Many people buy new fairway woods, they'll match their model to their driver so they have a kind of consistency across driver to fairway wood, a consistency across both. New fairways retail in the region of £250, but in used condition they're much cheaper. Uh, right now on Golf Bidder we have 1900 fairway woods for under 100 pounds. Like even Rory McIlroy is using what would be an old for him sim titanium fairway wood from 2020. So as a beginner if I was looking for a fairway wood I would again search the same brands as I mentioned uh, with the driver, those TaylorMade, Titleist, Callaway, Ping, Cobra and Strixon and I'd actually broaden my search to fairways that are up to 10 years old and go really from there because this is a club where you can get super value and excellent performance in an older model. But when starting out, do you need both the driver and fairway wood? Well, ideally, yes, because they do different jobs, but there's actually another club that can be a great option for your first set instead of a fairway, and that's this hybrid wood. Now, this one here is called a hybrid because it kind of looks like a wood and an iron have kind of got together and had a baby that resembles both. The idea being that it looks and acts and goes as far as the longest hitting iron, but it's really easy to hit up in the air. It's sometimes also called a rescue club because you can basically use it from loads of different places, like even off the tee, on par long par threes, on the fairway, in the rough. It's especially good at hitting your ball out of really tricky situations. And you know what, even around the green, these things are very handy. So yeah, a hybrid is a very handy club to have in your bag, just because they're really so versatile and easy to hit. You'll even see beginner sets of irons now that have hybrids as part of the set uh, instead of the harder to hit irons that you traditionally get in the set. And I'll explain that more in a minute. Now like fairway woods, a new hybrid might set you back in the region of 250 pounds, but more than any other club in the bag, there's great value to be had in used hybrids. We currently have 2,300 of them for under 100 pounds. Now because the heads are even smaller than fairway woods, hybrid technology hasn't really had the same advances as drivers or even fairways. It's almost as if as the heads get smaller from driver all the way down to hybrid, the gap between the manufacturers gets smaller too. So a good example of this actually was the Adams Golf Company, which were really pretty big uh, some years ago, and they made super hybrids, and they were taken over by TaylorMade really to get a hold of that technology that Adams had in their hybrid club. So if I was buying a hybrid as a beginner, I'd look for one with a fairly big head um, that you can actually, because the heads can vary a lot. And again, I'd look for quality, I'd look for a good shaft, and I wouldn't be afraid to buy an older club. Mine here, it actually looks brand new, but this is actually a Taylor, uh, TaylorMade M2 hybrid, again from 2016, I think. So once you start to play regularly, you'll soon see how far a driver and a fairway would tend to hit the ball. And the same with your irons, and you'll quickly figure out that a hybrid, if you have one, is a great, easy to hit, in between iron and fairway wood distance club. So as a beginner, you don't really need one, but you know what, it's a great one to bridge the gap between fairway woods and irons, if that makes sense. Next, we come on to irons, and you'll have more of these than any other club in the bag. Mine here run from four iron all the way to pitching wedge, which is essentially a 10 iron. And we actually have a great video on what all the letters on the golf clubs mean, which we'll also link to in the description. But the four iron here, this hits the golf ball the furthest and the lowest of all the irons. The pitching wedge, this one here, hits it the shortest and the highest. And that's all due to the loft on the clubs. Comparing the four iron to the pitching wedge, you'll see not much loft really on a four iron, and you'll see lots of loft on the pitching wedge. And you'll notice very quickly too, as a beginner, the pitching wedge will be so much easier to hit than the four iron. And that is exactly the same all the way to professional tour golfers. The price wise, a brand new set of good quality irons can cost in the region of about a thousand pounds. And used, Golf Fitter has over 800 sets for under 300 pounds 
at the time of making this video. Now the head of an iron, well, it's always metal, but they vary greatly from being a very hard material to having quite soft material actually. Hard metal irons in general hit the golf, golf ball further, but softer forged irons provide greater feel of the club on the golf ball, which better players love. But as a beginner, you really need to be more concerned with choosing an iron that has what we call a forgiving head. Now the biggest percentage of golfers actually playing the game are beginners and game improvers. And as such, there is a huge selection of irons specifically designed to suit you. Now, so looks-wise, when you're buying, they tend to have a nice big chunky heads, kind of like this one. They usually have lots of metal around the edges or the perimeter. They have lots of metal at the back. They have a cutout or a cavity. Some have the shaft set a little bit back from the head too. That's called offset. And all these things together combined make these irons very easy to hit. They're designed to hit the golf ball high, straight and far. And even if you don't swing it perfect, you'll get a decent outcome. Now, compared to the irons some professionals use, beginner and game improver irons, well, they're much more substantial. There's just much more material in them. The more than any other club, you can disregard much of that marketing I've been speaking about uh, that you'll hear about irons. A 10-year-old set of irons from a top brand can perform equally as well as a new set of irons. So the world really is your oyster when choosing your first set of irons. Now, if I was a beginner and picking my first set of irons on Golf Bidder, I would first set my budget and then I'd look for clubs within that range, safe in the knowledge that an older set in good condition can be equally as good as newer sets. I'd check the listing to see how many irons are in the set because it can vary a lot between brands. For instance, if a set runs all the way from four iron to pitching wedge and has included a more lofted club like this one here, often called a sand wedge, well then that's great value because that will save you money on having to buy another specialist club to hit the ball out of bunkers, which we're going to talk about in a second. But a lot of sets now just leave out the four and five irons as these are really difficult to hit. Uh, when you're starting out. So on Golf Bidder, you'll see lots of iron sets that run from six iron to sand wedge. And that will be more than enough for your first ventures on the golf course. It actually sets up perfectly to add an easy to hit hybrid if you want something to fill the gap from around 180 to 200 yards for those shots. Now irons also have a huge array of shafts with differing stiffnesses in graphite and steel. So take care and seek advice again from your pro before choosing one to suit you. I bought these Callaway irons on Golf Bidder. They have loads of forgiveness, which I need. They have a shaft, which suits how fast I swing it these days with my dodgy back. They're in absolutely pristine condition and they feel super. Now a sand wedge did come with the set, but I actually don't use it in my golf bag because actually before I leave irons, I just want to add that there are lots of manufacturers of super quality irons. The Reliables, yes, TaylorMade, Titleist, Callaway, Ping, Srixon, but add in Mizuno and Wilson and others who make wonderful irons in there too. But instead of using a sand wedge, I use the next three clubs here. They're simply called wedges. Now, as a beginner, you do not need specialist wedges like these. <laughs> but if you're playing for years like me, you feel like you can't do without them really. My three, they look almost exactly the same. They're like a set, but they all have different lofts. With the same swing, they all go nice and high with pretty much exact distances. So if I have a 120 yard shot, I use this one. If I have a 100 yard shot, I use this one. If I have an 80 yard shot, I use this one. If I have a bunker shot, I also use this one for my bunker shots, my most lofted shots, and all my short shots around the green. So, You'll be able to do much the same with your beginner irons um, as these specialist wedges, but these kind of just fine tune those shots for experienced players kind of like me. So 
that's why I have wedges. Now, a new wedge can cost about 150 pounds. The Golf Pitter has over 1,200 of them for under 75 pounds, so that's half the price. If you're buying a used wedge, make sure the face is in good condition. All the wedges for sale on Golf Pitter will conform to a rating guide and be in good, if not great condition. And all the big brands make great wedges, but kind of tightless, bulky wedges almost kind of lead the way. Um, make sure too, when you're buying wedges, to get advice on what lofts you need. Again, mine, mine are 48, 52, 56, and I use Cleveland. They're actually a great brand for wedges, but there's actually four degrees of loft between uh, each wedge, which is perfect for me. Now again, as a beginner, you don't really need wedges to start off, uh, especially if your iron set has that sand wedge included. So finally, let's go on to the putter, an essential in every golf bag from beginner to professional and the club uh, you'll use on the green and for pretty much half your shots in a round of golf. You can pay any amount of money for a putter from 500 pounds, for instance, and more for a new one. And we've got about 500 putters in stock for under 150 pounds. So there is huge value and choice out there in used putters. Now players have won majors with putters that cost $50, but more than any other club in the bag, it's personal preference really, when it comes to choosing which putter is right for you. I like these big blocky headed or kind of mallet type putters because for me, they're just very forgiving and don't wobble so much in my hands. But there's hundreds and thousands of putters out there and we've made actually lots of videos over the years comparing the different heads and even comparing cheap versus expensive putters and we'll link to those also in the description to help you. I think you'll find those interesting but putters are also clubs where smaller independent brands have a slice of the market too and make uh, great putters. Like my other putter is a brand called Even Roll and all they do is make putters and um, this one here is a ping. This one is easily 10 years old, but you know what? It's the one I use 99% of the time. The big names in putters, they are Scotty Cameron by Titleist, Odyssey, TaylorMade, Ping. Like they really push the boundaries when it comes to materials, quality, and technology, and with really great savings to be made on used models compared to new, those names really are a good starting off point when it comes to buying putters. The best thing to do before buying a putter is to get it into your hands. Um, like you can actually take advantage of the Golf Bitter seven day trial, um, just to take a putter, try it, and hit putts with various styles. Take a friend's putter even for five minutes on the putting green, see if you like the feel, or even go into a place like our Golf Bitter showroom where we have all the putters around the room and you can spend the whole day, if you like, trying different putters on our green to your heart's content before choosing one. It's kind of like that, it's personal preference. So there you go. Rest assured, as a beginner, you don't necessarily need all 14 golf clubs like I have here in my bag to get started in this great game of golf. Now we recently made a video actually, how many clubs do you really need? Which we'll link to below as well. And you know what, that's a good port of call to learn a little bit more before that all important purchase because you do want to get it right. So to summarize, do you need a driver? Yes, for sure. Fairway or a hybrid? Yes, one of them really to start off. Irons? Yes, for sure. Make sure you get at least six to sand wedge or six to pitch and wedge. Wedges? Yes, if the sand wedge isn't included in your iron set. Putter? Yes, definitely. So really nine clubs is what you really need to get started on your journey. Some might say that's even too many, but it's an exciting time buying your first set of golf clubs. And I really hope this video helps you to get the right ones for you. Now, if you have any questions or concerns, please pop them into the comments below and we'll try our best to answer them all to help you out. And of course, make sure to check out Golf Fitter's Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook for all the very latest. But for me, for now, it's Donald out.